What's up, people? Welcome to the Toasty Podcast. I'm trying something different. I want to give you guys a quick intro before we begin the actual episode to give you a rundown of what we talked about. This will help you jump to each section that you want to hear because these podcasts are long and uh, I wouldn't listen to the whole thing if it were me. I don't think I would. Honestly, before we begin, though, I want to tell you guys real quick on this specific episode only, I messed up the audio. The audio is not what it normally is. It's not the crisp, clear, amazing voice of me and Maddie V that you hear right now with the mic in front of me. It's the mic behind the iPhone and it's trash. So I apologize for that. That is completely my fault. I did not do the recording correctly. In spite of that, though, I hope you can enjoy this content anyway. And if you're here for the first time, please like, share, subscribe, smash that share button. We want to get this thing out there to everyone that wants to hear this or needs to hear this, regardless of opinion and personal belief. In light of that, today... We have a few topics for you guys. We give you a few updates on Israel. We go through that colleges are being sued by students because of the cost during COVID. We also want to tell you to share the podcast, of course. And then we get into our main topic, which is hunting and conservation and how they actually tie together and might even help each other out. We want to hit this with facts and research and tell you guys a little bit about hunting and conservation. I'm glad you're here. Let's get it. It's time. Are you ready? What's up, guys? This is the Toasty Podcast. My name is Sky. And I'm Matty B. And today, we've got some current events, and we've got some politics, as usual, with your dudes here explaining it in commentary. Yeah. So, let's get freaking to it. The first story I want to hit is the Israel story. I know there's a lot of uh, hubbub about this whoa, story. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't forget the Palestinians. Israel... Versus Palestinian. The I Israel story. Israel. Oh, my bad. Israel Palestinian story. Is that well, better? Okay, yeah, because I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, because you can't just say. I feel like a lot of people are putting the focus on Israel. Um, okay, in a negative light. Yeah. And I'm not putting a negative light That's on it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Just get, let me come around. Okay. Let me come around. So, first of all, you guys may have saw today, literally today, probably about four hours ago, Israel and Hamas agreed to a ceasefire, potentially ending the bloodiest fighting the region has seen in years. And that's funny to me, because I saw, while searching for that article from Fox News and from Business Insider, I found another article. What's interesting to me is that this article is from 2012, but the headline reads, Israel-Hamas ceasefire comes into effect. In Gaza, and it's from BBC News. Mm -hmm. Why is it just because Hamas, to gain money? It's because Hamas ran out of rockets. That's why. No, well, okay, hold on a second. This this current one is that what you're saying? Yeah. So this article that reads in 2012 says we need to stop rocket attacks, and um, as, as soon as they agreed, Palestinian gunmen are firing in the air in celebration, and then. Hamas still shoots more rockets into Israel after the ceasefire was called. This is 2012. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is, it's obvious what happens. Give it 12 hours. Give it 12 hours, some other stuff will happen. Yeah. I agree with you, too. The thing is, where it all started, apparently, is rent. And I don't understand that. I read into this a lot. And the thing is that people are talking about... Dispute. Yes. Legally, Palestinians are required to pay rent to a landlord. It's funny to me that I have to even say that. Because rent needs to be paid. You pay your rent. That's how that works to your landlord. Yeah. But that's not happening here. They don't believe that Israel is a place, legitimately. They don't think it's a country. They have been saying this for years. They don't recognize it's it. It's not. They don't, they don't recognize it at all. They think it's just, you know, a bunch of people that call them something. They call themselves something. So here they are, chilling like villains, living in apartments for free. And... What do you call that? Squatters? They're being squatters. And next thing you know, the landlords are like, yo, pay my rent. And they don't. Yeah. So the landlord starts suing them. Well, then Palestine gets mad about that. Obviously, they just think that that shouldn't happen because Israel doesn't exist to them. So here we go. They start firing. Mm -hmm. I don't. Israel did not shoot first. Not even close. No, they, they defended for the entire week and a half that this was going on. You and then decided, okay, you know what? Let's do something. 
Yeah. And then as soon as they do something, what do the le- what does the left mainstream media do? They they put it under negative light. They say that it's Israel's causing bloodshed everywhere. Mm-hmm. But Gaza wasn't. But Hamas wasn't. But the whole strip was fine. Yeah. What the heck is that? In April, Biden decides I'm going to put give two hundred thirty five million dollars to Palestinian Authority. A month before Hamas attacks. Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you that's, think they did with that, weird. a lot of that money? What do you think they did, right? They bought the stuff they used to freaking attack Those Israel. Yeah. Now, here's the interesting thing. On our side, in their defense, we're kind of playing both hands, in my opinion. Because the next thing you know, we give them $735 million so that Israel can replenish their rockets that they had to use during their freaking Iron Dome system, like, mm-hmm. defense, right? Exactly. Which, by the way, everyone's always talked about that defense system, and it's absolutely top of the line. You're yeah. talking about thousands of rockets, 300 a day at, at more than that probably. At least, yeah. Coming in to one city. And 90% of them get. And 90% of them go away? Yeah. Like just get freaking blown up before blown they... Blown up in the air, yeah. That's crazy. How, how does this thing work so well? Like you're talking about like a firework that's, that's better than that. It's like just constantly. Yeah. And you, if you're living anywhere near this base that they have, like you're, you're just, you're dead. Yeah, oh, it was okay. probably shooting like sure. it was probably go three hundred rockets. Like, let's think about that. You know, what is three hundred like divided into twenty four? You know, let me do that. That's a lot. I mean, it's and the, the thing is, they shoot them all at once so that it overwhelms the Iron Dome system as much as possible. But they're still the success rate is still remarkable considering how many rockets are being fired all at once. Um, that's what. Yeah, it's, I, I don't get it. It's crazy to me. But that's kind of the lowdown on the whole Israel versus Palestine or Palestine versus Israel thing. Round 237. It's, this is not, yeah, I, there's a lot of history here, and there's a lot I could explain. Yeah. And you could say it all started with Rome in 70, destroying a Jewish state and then calling it Palestine. Mm-hmm. But you know what? We won't go that far. I don't really feel like going that far because I'm not the history guy, and uh, I didn't really let Matt know to prep for that. That's not what we're doing. It's not that's a deep all, dive. That's all good. So, I mean, it, 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 long story short, it's a long, complicated history in which the Palestinians honestly have been offered two amazing peace deals uh, in my lifetime, and they basically just haven't accepted either one, and they've both been very mutually beneficial. So let's just pretend those missiles go off 24 hours a day. 300, just 300 of them. Mm-hmm. 12 and a half missiles an hour. You know, so you're gonna hear you're gonna hear this freaking missile every twenty minutes. Sorry, like ten minutes, five minutes, six minutes, mm-hmm. eight minutes, something like that. You're gonna hear it a lot. You're gonna hear a freaking defense round all the time throughout the day. That's crazy, and that's that's saying they shoot them all twenty four hours, which they may just do twelve hours because that's a day, right? That's crazy. It's insane, guys. If you're listening right now on the podcast, thank you. We appreciate you. But if you'd rather watch, head on over to YouTube. We have a channel called The Toasty Podcast, of course. You can watch us there as well. I will have the video edited and uploaded probably next week. Now, well, that you would have been listening tomorrow is Friday, and I could bring the podcast out on Fridays. So after that, the next week is when I have it up on YouTube. Right now, we're on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us if you are on Facebook Live. I try to be as present as possible in yeah. all of the platforms. It does get complicated sometimes. It does you help if what? you just like and share and subscribe. The main thing, literally the main thing is sharing it. Yeah. That is the most help we can have to spread the word. If you agree with us, we agree with you, share it. Because yeah. maybe someone else wants to hear it too. Yeah. You never know. And in order to save, you know what? I'll go as far as to say, in order to save America and save free speech, we need more podcasts like this and more shows like this getting shared. And that requires Very true. listener help. Yep. The next story I wanted to mention or get to in current events before we hit our main topics of hunter hunting and conservation. <clears throat> Apparently, which is good, I actually this is actually a positive thing to me. Students are finally fed up with how colleges are treating them mm-hmm. as far as tuition, the cost, you know, um, living expenses, all of these things added together, it sucks. College is too expensive. And we've said that in a previous podcast. We've had a podcast where I said, is college worth it? And we just dove into that question. You guys can check that out also on YouTube if you want to, or go into Spotify and look at the past episodes. It is one of our first, so... 
please cut us some slack. Uh -huh. But I went to actually NBC News of all places. This is actually all over the place, but NBC is who I chose. Students at 25 colleges sue for refunds after campuses closed because of coronavirus. The quotes here are, it's just not the same experience I would be getting if I was at the campus. His quote's not wrong, though, and there's tons of students just like him that think the exact same thing. I put a poll out to audience, my audience that I, you know, sort of have, I guess, and they responded. They told me, yeah, they did pay the exact same, and yes, it was, they actually paid more. There was a distance fee on these students' college tuition. A distance fee, and they were remote insane. remote learning, which honestly I wouldn't even call that learning. No, that's not learning. You're watching a screen, and when you're watching a screen, yeah. I mean, maybe some people learn like that. I do not. I can't sit here and do that all day, especially if it's a screen of my teacher. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about ADHD. Like, let's be honest here. This is from the AP. So they wanted the campus experience, but their colleges sent them home to learn online during the coronavirus pandemic. But now students at more than 25 U.S. universities, and this is just NBC News putting this. I've heard other outlets saying that it's hundreds of colleges. Um, you know, but they're filing lawsuits against their schools demanding partial refunds at least. You're talking about $60,000 a semester at some of these places maybe more, and they're paying that still while they're at home. What's the college doing? Do they have to mow the grass still? No. Well, they probably do, but I'm yeah, just saying... they got to maintain they'll, the campus. Maintain the campus? They're saving a lot of easy. utilities. Too, I was going to say, electricity, and... if the professors are there, mm -hmm. sure, I understand some of that, but that does not explain thousands and thousands of students not being present and why they would need all the utilities still. Now, here's what I think. I think colleges are heavily in debt. I think colleges somehow, just like the U.S. government, spend more than they make. And I'm not sure how that, how that happens because, honestly, I can't think of a thing that colleges would need to spend money on. But let's think about this. Colleges lobbying. Does that happen? Uh, in a way. Um, I mean, they're public institutions, so they get public funds already. They don't really have to lobby. Like you're talking like private universities at Yale and well, did they? Yale. They don't, they don't really get I mean, public funding. They, right? they get grants, so they get lots of public funding. They In these 25, there was a few like state schools, a few big state schools, mm -hmm. and then there was mostly like pretty good private universities that were getting sued. So it's, I'm just confused. Yeah, how would a college spend more than they make? Like where does that, you Did know, that come from? Yeah, I would think That's about like... That's a really good question. Like you have buildings already there. Like, you know, let's... Colleges aren't like expanding I mean, all the time. Be, it could right? be. It could be. Yeah, I think. I mean, A and M is expanding all the time. Huge, massive, biggest campus in the U.S. land area wise, and uh, they're they're building new buildings all the time. So I could understand if they went into debt temporarily to build a new state of the art building, and then they made the revenue back after you know expanding tuition. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So interesting. I could see temporary debt, maybe running. But running a deficit, debt. like running a deficit in their revenue every year is like, whoa, how? I mean, every other corporation does it. Tuition is like insanely expensive. So. You're talking about, yeah, this is a lot of money. This is millions of dollars that colleges make. Mm -hmm. Millions. Billions. Billions. Okay, billions. I'll even go, so you're right. Because like thousands of students. It's definitely like billions. There's no way. Well, colleges, though, reject the idea that refunds are in order because students are learning from the same professors who teach on campus, officials have said. And they're still earning credits toward their degrees. Schools insist that after being forced to close by their states, they're still offering students a quality education. <laughs> That's what they're saying. That's their thing. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I but, just, they're, but they're not. They're not offering a quality education at that point, in my no, opinion. they're not. They're still we're paying those professors. That's kind of their problem, honestly. Yeah. You, there's no way you're getting the same amount of learning. There's no you, way you're what getting do you do the same. What do you do with the tenured professor when there's no classes? You have to either put them on a screen and then you got to make them do something. Cause you're what already, is the professor you're, doing? You gotta, are they actually at campus or are they at you home? you pay them either way. It depends on the class, I'm sure. Look, but I can I see you, online. I bet you they're at home. I can see online classes working for some classes. It's always been the case. An MBA, like random classes that really, okay, fine, I'll take these courses because I have to and I'm going to do it so I can have a skill, mm -hmm. fine. You know, like mechanics is a hands-on thing. You can't do that, no. which I'm not really trying to compare that one. I don't even know if that one was actually 
from a, but even like most science like, classes there was some doctor there was a lab right you can't do anything with that and there was some doctors that were talking about that they're talking about their their students like having to be remote learning how does, how does this work if you're trying to be a doctor yeah how is that how does that there's no way you gotta have some sort of I don't the care there's no way that works lab. there's no way that works yeah and I'm a guy that has to be you gotta be in person like I'm a very I can definitely learn if I'm in person with somebody mm-hmm. Exactly. Now I was never the guy that could sit, could sit through class either. I'm I'm just not that guy. But that's not. I don't think that's who I'm really trying to target here. I'm I'm saying, remote learning does not work for the majority of people. I would I would argue that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean I, I agree with you. Completely. There's no way. It's not a very good way to. And the last thing I'll end on with colleges is, the one article I read, and I'm not going to get that far into it because I didn't really go that far into it, and it wasn't really going to be part of our topics, but I just wanted to mention it. More colleges say they're going to require students to have COVID-19 vaccines for fall. Now, I wonder how that will play out. I don't even know if it actually will play out. Well, most colleges and high schools and public schools require vaccines for other things, so it's not like surprising. They require flu and meningitis vaccines. So, so this is Duke University in North Carolina. Uh-huh. Ruger's University in New Jersey, um, the Notre Dame University, yeah. um, Brown and Cornell, Northwestern University, Cleveland State. Wow, these are some big schools. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not surprising. It's not surprising to me either, I guess. But you're talking; these students are already mad. They they couldn't go to school, and they're paying astronomical rates. So you're going to add this to it? Yeah, I mean, they. I think they have a real case for. For a lawsuit, for sure, class action. Maybe. Come on, Some where are these guys going? Like, let's do something. Mm-hmm. Do something. Yeah. The education system is wrecked, Completely. and it has been for a while. And yeah. I, when is that going to be a, a, a focal point? It definitely won't right now. While the mainstream media on the left is all we see because of censorship. That's a big deal too. But you know what? In that case, you know, do your own thing. Don't go to college. So be it. Honestly, these days, people are making money just streaming online mm-hmm. and being freaking idiots on a, behind a mic. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what, you know, if that's the case, our economy is weird right now. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of people that have no practical skills that are making money. And, and, oh. and that's we need, a, we that's need a real, real workers. That's a real problem because Farmers. What, happens, what happens if there's a freaking EMP and the internet goes out for a year? Right. How many people are going to be completely and utterly helpless? Like, right. completely. Like, they don't even know where to get food. And that's their fault, right? Yeah. Now, I think when, when it comes to something like a shutdown, if we're going to talk about that, when it comes to something like a shutdown, like, let's just say electricity goes out for a while or whatever. Like, we had in Texas for a few days, even. Mm-hmm. Big cities, people that live in big cities, will have zero idea what to do. Yeah. They will not know how that's to handle themselves. That's basically what happened, yeah. We're talking about gas shortages, and then some people have said that in D.C. there's food shortages. I don't know if these things are true at all. Mm. D.C. or Chicago, one of the two. Um, but but anyway, if, let's just pretend that if this was the case, yeah, you're wrecked. Practical skills are imperative. And so if you're going to go to school, by God, just go to learn a trade. Mm-hmm. Please learn a trade. Because when least, it comes down to it, at least as your fallback plan. Because when it comes down to it, and you don't have anything going on, and you're ruined, and everything's shut down, and and we're in a freaking we're in turmoil, and you know we're in factions, <laughs> factions against the capital, and all this mm-hmm. stuff. Like let's just let's just throw it down. I know how to work on cars. I have my skill, and I will be just fine, and I'll figure yeah. it out. Obviously, also I grew up on a country on, in the country, so I know some other things too. But that's what I'm talking about. Basic, I think basic farming is a real, like even ur- urban farming. Like and you're the a, freaking guy for that. I have a small raised bed. I've got containers that have stuff. Right. I mean, my, my house is on a tenth of an acre. And that's a small plot of land. That's tiny. That's tiny. Okay. It takes me 10 minutes to mow my lawn, which is nice. But um, it is like the middle of Fort Worth. And uh, just having that little garden brings me a lot of peace of mind just because it's a good practice it's good practice yeah. and I'll be able to keep a lot of those seeds that I grow mm-hmm. and save them and, and redo it maybe yeah maybe you do know it, just keep do it next seeds, year keep doing it next year and honestly the more you do that probably the better the seeds are because they're yeah. probably more organic the more you do it because yeah. I know when you buy seeds off the shelf they're honestly not the best uh-huh. that's true and because my mom used to do a garden right and I know some things about it because of that I haven't done it personally I helped whatever mm-hmm. a new kid helping but 
And I have one raised Dude. bed this year, and next year I'm going to have two. And next right. year I may have three. And if I have three raised beds, that's enough to feed a family of three for three months out of the year. Yeah, this is self-sufficiency, guys, and it's important. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying we're headed down this crowd. I'm not saying we're there. I'm not really saying we're there. But there are a lot of signs. There are a lot of things going on right now, and there's, there's just... I'm just skeptical of a lot of things. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I think it's time to figure some stuff out. Yeah. Especially with all the UFOs that we're seeing lately. Especially with all the UFOs yeah, we're no, apparently the... seeing. And Obama's like, I won't say there's not. I can't talk about it. Like, if he says that, then... Pff, and then the, the, former, the former head yeah. of the, the Pentagon Special Research Team or whatever that it was for aerial phenomena... Yeah. Basically just said, like, today or yesterday, I think it was yesterday, that the U.S. has uh, special materials, like... I can't remember exactly what the phrase was, and I really wish I knew right now. But uh, they have, uh, yeah, they have like specific material from that's that's not recognizable. They don't know what the heck it is. What's interesting to me is that the more we talk about this, and the more this happens, you know, whenever you said, "I think it's not aliens," I think it actually is us. Yeah. Okay, I actually, I'm actually starting to believe that more. It looks more and more like like than us aliens than aliens because that's of the what way. I think. Really? Yeah. See, usually you think the opposite. I don't know if it's even us from the future, dude. No, I know. I, I think no, I, I'm So I'm, I'm saying that I'm actually disagreeing now with my... I'm starting to come to terms with the fact that it may not be <laughs> what I called interdimensional beings, which would be, for, honestly, humans in the future, uh-huh. because of the way everything's playing out. You know? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's release these and not those. Let's talk about this and not that. And it all feels like a real, real weird in some spy CIA movie. Honestly, not even a movie. In MK Ultra or some crap. Like, it feels like something's going to come out and it's going to be like, oh, the CIA hired Bob Lazar yeah. and he's a CIA operative and turns out this is us. And we have an absolutely amazing military, you know? Mm-hmm. that's what I'm thinking now and I think you literally brought that idea into my head and I started thinking more and more and then the more I stuff I see and I read about it I'm like okay this, this is too too much <laughs> too much I'm like there's no way and I think they're just warming us up to it dude the more we find out the more they bring out they're warming us up to this idea that something crazy is out there so that when they do tell us yeah it's us we're all just like yep. oh, okay cool whatever you know so then they can get away with introducing some freaking crazy stuff in, into our lives. And we'll just be like, yeah, cool, whatever. Yeah. That, that's a desensitizing. They're desensitizing mm-hmm. us. Exactly. They're getting us ready for what they're about to share with us, which is basically like, hey, guess what? We can basically manipulate. Lo- we can locally manipulate space-time. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to be they're, like... They finally well, like have some what? scientists coming out, and they're like, yeah, we found dark matter. We exist. And you're like, What? And then yeah, we can power, what that we can power is, the world. Like, oh my gosh! Like we can power the world for a thousand years, no problem. Guys, don't go to Reddit. <laughs> and then, and honestly, because, that's where I learned all guess this stuff. What's gonna happen? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> the thing is, though, guess what's going to happen once they once they once we go? Oh, guess what? We found a uh, form of energy that's ten times, you know, a hundred times more efficient than nuclear energy, right. and, and a thousand times safer, or something like that. Think about fossil fuels. Think about right. cars. Think about now. Think about why they always push climate change. Everything. Yeah. Exactly. They don't need to. We know they don't need to. I don't think they need to. I think we are advancing anyway. Exactly. We're advancing. The private market is going to take take care of it eventually. Yeah. And Elon Musk will save us all. Yeah, duh. <laughs> but the thing is, we're not even the biggest polluters. Our 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 carbon emissions went down right. the last like five years. Mm-hmm. Just naturally have gone down. It's not because of government regulations. Because we're we're getting more efficient cars because that's what people want. And a lot more people, I see a lot more solar panels on roofs. Right. It's all over the place. And that's just, and, and wind turbines, it's like 20% of Texas electricity is like wind turbines. So it's like. To coin a term from the news outlets, uh, someone familiar with the matter told me electric vehicles take seven years once bought, actually specifically a Tesla Model S, takes seven years once bought to reach uh, carbon neutral mm-hmm. or, you know, from the factory to the car, including all of it. So seven years to make up for the factory, pretty much, is what he's saying. Uh, make up for the factory? Like, make up for but then the again, car like, being created. How is that electricity? Does that make sense? Yeah, but how is that electricity being generated? Well, he said coal and everything. He said coal, that. Yeah. No, he said, literally, he said, the car itself 
only makes up for itself in seven years. Mm. That's kind of how he said it. Like, he was like, so really, it's, you know, not necessary right now. Anyway, okay, moving on, moving on, guys. The college thing was great. That was crazy. Students deserve it. I think they have to have the power. And if you are a student and you haven't spoken up about this, you need to speak up about this. Because I haven't seen a single word about this until I started researching it. And I asked people about it. I had to ask, hey, what happened during COVID at your school? And they would tell me. And they would, they would want to tell me. But why don't I see that? You know, on my social media and everything else, like, maybe people are just tired of talking. Maybe mm-hmm. people are just tired of talking because they know it's going into this endless void. And they're not even going to be seen anyway. They're not even going to be heard. But what yeah. about in person and everywhere else? Oh, well, maybe they haven't been in person. But I don't know. I just think... That's weird that we don't hear about these types of things. These things could actually like be good for us, you know? Mm-hmm. Let's get away from all of the mainstream narrative that just makes us feel negative about life. Yeah. About cities that are on across the world. I have a weird feeling that in like the next two years, three years, like none of this is going to matter. We're going to look at 2020 and be like, wow, that seemed normal compared to what's going on now. A weird feeling? Dude, I, that's a, that, I agree with you completely. Everyone says 2021 is worse than 2020. Man, I don't think that's going to change for another six years. I think every single year someone's going to say, well, this is worse than last year. What I'm saying is... We're in challenging times, dude. What I'm saying is that in, in, in two, three years, I think a lot of the, like uh, we mentioned those unskilled people... I think a lot of them are going to have a real hard time. And I, I don't mean like down to luck trying to find a job hard time. I mean like struggling to survive. I, I, I don't know. I don't have a lot of faith. I'm not, I'm not what great. year did you say? Two, or three, four years. Two, or three now. years from morning. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I would say that I can I can concur. I would say it's five years. It's kind of what I was giving myself five year lunch on, on factions forming and all that stuff, like you're saying. Because, well, you're not saying that, but. I feel like to get to that point, oh, that's getting there. we've already hit the culture war going hot. Yep, there's a lot more tribalism the, going on for the sure. Col- tribalism is it, dude. Culture war right now, I think, is cold. It's It exists. We know it exists. What it's do you insane. mean it's cold? Well, we have people talking back and forth, mad at each other constantly. Oh, like a cold war? Cold war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in America, this is happening. I don't think it's a cold war anymore at all. I, I disagree. It's, it's hot now. Look at the Black Lives Matter riots. That We're happened over seeing the summer. violence already. Look at Antifa in Portland. They claim territory. By the way, guys, riots are still happening. If you're not keeping, you know, you're obviously not going to see that because they don't want you to see that. Mm-hmm. That's still going on. Sometimes you just got to take a deep breath and take a step back. Yeah. So real quick, uh, to go back on UFOs, because this is a crazy... Going back to UFOs? Yeah, this is just a crazy phenomenon that's like really bubbling up right now. (laughs) And I've always been like, I've always been very interested in UFOs. I've never really been like a hardcore believer, like, Mm -hmm. because I'm, mm, I don't know, really skeptical. Um, But this is really interesting. Uh, A former opinion, this is from Yahoo Entertainment, funnily enough, whatever. the headline is, former Pentagon director claims U.S. government is in possession of, quote, exotic materials from UFOs. That's what I was looking for. Exotic materials. Exotic materials, huh? Mm-hmm. We don't know what they are or how they came into possession of them, whether we just found them or whether they were created in the lab, like S4 mm-hmm. or Area 51. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't know. Um, this guy just says it's all he can say, basically. Uh, Lou El- Elizondo appeared on Tucker and said um, yeah just revealed that the when did he appear the Department of Defense is in possession of more than just reports more than just reports yeah do what when was that uh Wednesday he appeared on Wednesday holy crap dude yeah like I said I think they're just bringing stuff up slowly and they're like all right, soon enough they won't even care, and we'll just say, yeah, it's actually us. We're, we're awesome, and they're, we're just going to be like, okay, cool. You know, as if keeping secrets from us like that are, aren't important. Like, I, I don't know, guys. I'm all about, you know, being truthful, and that's probably why I, I, I couldn't be a politician. I would just say exactly what I found out. Well, Janet said, you know, Kennedy's having an affair. I, don't, I wouldn't care. I would just say whatever the heck I wanted to say. You know, it wouldn't matter. But... Uh, 
and I would tell people exactly what I knew. Like, yeah, Russia is definitely coming after us. Or they just wouldn't be you know any like intelligence China's in, in there for sure. Maybe not, but I don't want to be in intelligence committees anyway because they suck and they're always out to get you anyway. You know, like, come on, dude. You could be in one, and they're still like, okay, let's get blackmail on him so we know that we can get him out of here at the moment's notice. Yeah, it's kind of messed up. So, guys, we really want to get into this, and this is about hunting and conservation. Yeah. Matt was feeling this, it, and I'm cool with it. I'm not. It, I'm, I'm into it, but I don't know. Like, I know about hunting. Yeah. Hunting and conservation. A lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of people okay. think that. What? Where did this come from? Why did you? Why? Did, why now? Did you have this thing that you're like, oh, dude, we gotta hit hunting and conservation. I don't. Honestly, I think it was. Uh, I spoke to my granddad recently, like uh, last week or something. Just a brief, brief phone call. Yeah. Ten minutes or fifteen minutes or whatever. And uh, he wanted me to read his his fable. There's a. It was kind of this. Uh, stigma out there for hunters, especially after that dentist shot Seth a little lion or whatever. That that really adorable, you know, killer lion. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that guy got, like, docs, lost his practice. Like, what? horrible stuff happened to that guy. Yeah. Just because he shot a lion because his professional hunter told him to shoot that lion. Cancel culture it's not like, and it's not, like the, it's not like a freaking dentist flew over to Africa, was walking through the freaking African plains, and with a rifle on his back and it was just like oh there's a lion boom no like the professional hunter probably not from that area uh, considering the lion was like locally famous or whatever I don't know uh, the prof- professional hunter said look that one's got a big black mane that's the one you want it's old get it and he got it and everyone's upset because this lion's super famous and like has a you know, a cult following or whatever. I don't know. It sings karaoke on Fridays. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> sings but ever since then, <laughs> ever since then, hunters have got a, not ever since then, but especially since then, hunters have got a really bad stigma that they just indiscriminate. It's like the guy. Is it specifically in America? Like, is it American culture that's against these hunters? Um. Because I, I feel like it probably not is. Not really. Not, not really. It's just like these people talk about things like that they're European, about. European, yeah. I feel like in in other countries like Northern Asia, like Russia and Kazakhstan and those areas, like there's a lot of hunting, lots of hunting, a lot of game. It's a huge, huge area, not a lot of people. There's only like thirty, what is it, like thirty million people live in Russia, and it's like the second biggest, maybe no, it's the first biggest country. Like it's crazy, it's huge, lots of lots of open wilderness out there. There's lots of hunting naturally. Um, and then uh, in Africa, that's a huge part of their uh, economy. Income. Yeah, yeah, that's a huge thing for them. Yeah. The thing is, is that in Africa, it's more about, it matters a lot. Like, tigers can come into villages and ransack their place and kill people. Yeah, most, that's know? mostly in, like, in India. India? Southern Asia. So Ti- tigers, lions? Tigers specifically, specifically. Lions can go in and kill people? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, this is me. I don't hunt. I'm sorry. The it's <laughs> so in Africa. There's a lot of stuff that can kill you. Hippos actually kill the most people in Africa. Um, crocodiles are really bad too, and believe it or not, baboons are horribly vicious, evil animals. Right? No, yeah. They will. They that specifically go after children. National and Geographic stuff. Dude. Kill them, like it's rip them limb from limb and kill them. Their teeth are like three inches long. So it's brutal. Like, yeah, it's brutal. So a that lot was of morbid. <laughs> A lot of, yeah, well, like I said, it's very misunderstood. So, a lot of times, local villages, if they see a pack of baboons, they just, pack, like, pop them. Like, baboons are, are viciously mean, horrible animals. So are zebras, believe it or not. Uh, zebras are pretty aggressive and very uh, rambunctious animals. They almost cannot be domesticated. Well, I mean, I would be too if I was out there. You're always getting freaking eaten by crocodiles and crap. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, you know, like com- gotta com- kick them, you compared know? to, like, antelope, <laughs> antelope will mostly just, like, run away. Like, zebras will very staunchly defend themselves and are pretty territorial. Um, Survival, dude. Yeah, so, and then, speaking of conservation, when I was, when I was in Africa, my granddad took me to Africa when I was 18, and when I was there, we went to uh, a game preserve, a national game preserve in Botswana. And it was like, you could not touch anything. Like, locals, uh, 
tourists, nobody could touch anything, control anything. There was just like a very, like extremely strictly regulated. Like animals just had to naturally thrive and survive. And if there's no, if there's no population oversight and control, like things can get out of hand, especially if it's a contained area like this was. I mean, it was like a million hectares or something. It was huge. But, um, what's a hectare? Hector is like, uh, I can't remember, it's like a thousand acres or something. Oh. It's, it's a large Interesting. area. Of land. Um, what I saw firsthand was um, an incredible overpopulation of African elephants. And a lot of people think, oh, elephants are endangered, right? Like, no, they're not at all. African elephants are a least concern, and they're in certain, in certain areas, at least the places I went to, are overpopulated. Like, they need to be cold. Um, I saw, like, trees, like, stripped of their bark and just death, like, completely, like, everywhere. I saw a, a baby elephant that was starved to death, uh, dead, and being eaten by vultures. Uh, and it was, like, common. My, my professional hunter, the pH was like, that's what goes on on these stupid game preserves because they don't cull the population. And the bulls, well, just the big bulls are huge, massive, and they just knock down the babies and eat, eat whatever they can for themselves because the food is that scarce. Melvins don't do that. They stick together. They're very social, tight-knit animals. Um, right. So it's pretty, pretty crazy what they've driven them to just in the name of you know, conservation. Um, and a, a lot of other animals don't survive because a lot of the trees and leaves and grass gets eaten up by elephants. They eat a tremendous amount of food. That and, um, believe it or not, in Africa problems are crazy. Uh, people running into elephants at night uh, with their cars was becoming an increasing problem because there's no, there's no, like, there's no, there's, there are traffic lights in Africa, of course, like traffic is fairly normal in metropolitan areas, but in Botswana, where I went to, we landed on a dirt runway and there was uh, no street lights uh, there were like like stoplights and stuff, but no like lighting on the streets at night. So a lot of times people at dusk don't drive with their headlights on. People aren't very good drivers in Africa because there's just lack of regulation. And they'll hit elephants in the middle of the night with their tiny, crappy Chinese cars, and they'll die. But the elephant will like have a sprained ankle and just walk off. Right. So it's like and it, that's a that, Holy cow. that's a common occurrence. Don't um, die from that. Oh, it's an elephant. It's no, a, I'm just. I'm so, I guess yeah, it's a twenty thousand pound animal. I used to didn't, I didn't imagine you're going that fast. I guess, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, I have seen though. It's a huge. Whenever huge I, I watched Earth, uh-huh. they showed a uh, there was an episode about elephants and how they travel in the city at night. Mm-hmm. And they'll like travel in packs, sort of, and they'll just cross the street like the hell is she go? Care. Yeah. And like, it was dark, and you couldn't see much, and there's no lighting. Yeah. So I can totally see that happening. Yep. You're just driving along, and you're like, oh, crap, that's an elephant. Er, boom. Shortly after that's I, crazy, I landed in Botswana, I didn't see any, like, animals in South Africa, not, like, anything really, like, spectacular. Um, but after we had the short flight from South Africa to Botswana, um, we were driving on this inter- uh, as an international highway, really, and we kind of slowed down a little bit, and my peach is like pointing to the left and I'm like, what, what are we looking at? And it's just this like gigantic bull elephant, like huge, biggest animal I've ever seen in my life. And probably like, I don't even know, like 17 feet tall, 18 feet tall, easy, huge, massive tusks, just chilling right on the side of the highway, did not care about cars or anything. And like, and they could, they could pick up a car with their tusks yeah, and toss dude, it. Like they are strong, huge, ridiculous You could just animals. like walk onto the car and just and crush it, yeah. Like, it, this is insane, dude. So they're, they're dangerous, but um, they, they have to be, the, the population, my point is the population has to be controlled. Otherwise, other animals, pop, other animal populations will diminish and struggle. You see what I'm saying? But why do they even have to be there in the first place? They should just leave the animals alone. Yeah, well, humans like to multiply a lot faster than <laughs> animals do. I'm trying to beat the other argument. <laughs> Yeah, it <laughs> doesn't. Know. It doesn't work. There's no. The thing is, it doesn't work because, you know, no one, everyone that's not there is is not there. Mm-hmm. So if you live there, 
and these people that argued against it lived there, they wouldn't argue against it at that point. That would change everything dramatically. Oh, yeah. Because they would be like... Most people that are anti-hunting have never been hunting, don't know anybody that hunts. And maybe and they don't own guns either. And, and probably not. Or they or they just own a shotgun and fire it out their window, like Joe Biden says. Um, what? <laughs> go out on your front porch and fire shots in the air. What an idiot. Let's slap him. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, exactly. You, you got to know people that hunt and know what goes on. So my granddad... Uh, I think this weekend, actually, is going to be in San Antonio, uh, and he is going to be hunting an extinct animal. So that's pretty cool. What? Yeah. Right? Why can't you say the animal? I can't remember what it is. Oh, no, are you some, kidding me? Some... You can't say that and then, like, lead, lead, lead me on like I know, that. I really wish I knew. Um, but it's a uh, Record Buck Ranch, which is uh, actually where I shot my white-tailed deer. And uh, it's a great it's a great place to shout to record bunk. But he is they've got they've got so many they've got elk they've got sheep they've got outad sheep Armenian mufon Corsican European mufon four horned Hawaiian black Texas doll and Uriel that's just the sheep on this on this ranch uh, they've got exotic antelope uh, Arabian oryx Adex antelope black buck blessed buck bongo Adama gazelle eland games buck kudu. Now, Lechway, uh, no guy, no guy is pretty common in uh, Texas. So is uh, actually not not in the Isles. Red Lechway, I think I can't remember. There's a lot of these that are um, okay. Well, how is he? So it, it doesn't really matter. How is he doing this though? How is he hunting an extinct? Did they just they're extinct in the wild. Oh, that's and they right. only exist on Texas game preserves, right? Game ranches, and that what's cool is um, yeah, you can hunt these. Um, if you want a kudu, it's nineteen thousand dollars. If you want a bongo, it's thirty seven thousand um, dollars. But what that does is that pays for um, equipment and oversight for the herd. And what you do is you take the biggest, oldest alpha male, so that new males can grow up and impregnate the other females. And there's a way to do it. And if you have the right mindset on it, and you have the right people doing it, then exactly. you're just going to keep having animals. So Produce yeah. Like, there's college majors for small game. Obviously, there's an extinct animal that doesn't. It's not extinct on a game on a game preserve. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know. Exactly. I'm interested to see like, did they have it in their preserve before it went extinct? You know. That's a good question. Like, how do they do that? Is it freaking Jurassic Park stuff? We got the tree sap from a tree, and we mm-hmm. uh, it's a mosquito in the tree sap. Got the DNA from that. I don't think so. And we made a kudu. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's, uh, I'm sure they, they have them from other game ranches. I'm sure that obviously originally most of them came from Africa. Yeah. Um, but because of mismanagement and poor population control, um, of animals like elephants and lions, uh, these antelope and exotic deer fall off the face of the earth. Yeah. It's like pandas. Like if they're not very carefully monitoring and controlled, <sighs> pandas, they man. won't survive. Pandas just need to just go. Just let them slip off the face what? of the earth. Yeah, I don't care. Let them go. They don't. They suck this at isn't reproducing. This is playing into your your hunting and conservation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I I get it. I get it. Dude, how hypocritical pandas are sounds. so adorable. How can you say that? But they suck at living. They suck at living. Oh. All I do is sit around and go high like koalas do. It's like uh, the unemployed. <sighs> they're like, yeah, they're like your unemployed millennial that still lives in your garage at like 20. <laughs> That's pandas. Like, you That's why not, we love them so much. You should not procreate. You should just... You we're, know, yeah, we're already not doing that on purpose. So it's not because we're just, you know, whatever. <laughs> Apparently that's happening, you know. Dang, dude. Hey, guys. One more time, I'll say it again and again and again. Please share this and let people know what's going on. Right now, though, I want to talk a little bit about conservation because we've talked about hunting. I think people understand that there are differences and, you know, it's really not all it's it's cracked up to be. Yeah. And there's a lot of things you don't know. There's a lot of nuances. And, and you know, just like all these other things that people advocate, uh, these activists want to get out and talk and have a have a – a speech about something and have a cause to follow and I'm I'm down with that. I get I get doing that. I get wanting to have a purpose in life because I'm the same way. I always am looking for my purpose. I think I found it, but 
that's beside the point. You need to research what you're advocating. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. And right Talk now is the hardest. Yeah. Right now is the hardest time to do that. Yeah. Because no one knows anything. Because we aren't shown anything and we're remote learning. Well, also, TikTok has brought us in, well, TikTok, commercials, TV, internet, all of okay. that junk has brought us I'm very still... short attention spans and we can't hold our attention on one thing for more than 30 seconds so we end up just reading headlines that don't have anything to do with fact. They just say something. And then very deep down in the article are the actual facts that no one really reads or cares about. You know what I mean? And then I'm social there. media, I'm you there. spread it all around there. and it spreads I... like wildfire. It's crazy. I... Yeah... I want to talk a little more about that later because so, I've got some stuff on that. But conservation on that topic. So you're are you trying to say hunting plays into the conservation side of things? Absolutely. Because here's a uh, – this is an academic article on hunting and conservation. It's uh, Does Sport Hunting Benefit Conservation by Andrew J. Loveridge, Jonathan C. Reynolds, and E.J. milner Uh I can't find what school this is from. But it is published, published article, and it's basically when a, here's the introduction real quick, first paragraph. Um, when a wildlife popula- population is threatened, deliberately killing individuals from it may seem perverse, yet some argue that, paradoxically, a well-regulated, well-regulated sport hunting benefits wildlife populations and may sometimes be the only way to ensure their persistence. In this essay, we consider whether this assertion is supported by experience. Um... Yeah, when, when poorly regulated hunting can be historically and often has been damaging to target population. I mean, think about American bison, you know, overhunted to the point of almost extinction. There there was like 100 left. And now they're like everywhere, all throughout the uh, American West mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's just about, uh, you can hunt them. You can you can shoot one today. Go back to that now. No problem. Hunt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can hunt. Uh, you can, uh, grizzlies are... Coming back to Wyoming, and wolves are down to Colorado. Okay, that right there, though, let's talk wolf, about that for a second. Wolf hunting is starting. starting so to become a, almost like come, come, please hunt these wolves. There's actually some people that don't want that because of what the, ends up happening with the wolves hunting other things. Like it almost like spreads like wildfire. What do you mean? Well, because wolves were actually already starting to move naturally, mm-hmm. and they actually started transporting them as well. And for some reason, I haven't done a lot of research on this. I need to do more. But mm-hmm. apparently, transporting them is worse than if you just let them come down naturally. Yeah. And they were coming down naturally yeah. from like from Yellowstone. Uh, Yellowstone. They were just like literally because there was like a pack or a family or something. Literally a tiny number of wolves. Yep. Yep. And it moved to Colorado. And if they could have just like preserved them and been like, all right, you guys are great, and let's let them live on, and like they grow up from there. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that's way better for the environment than. The transport procedure because of I guess it, they grow too quickly, mm-hmm. or the, the population grows way too quickly. Yeah. So the other populations of animals flames. can't can't cope. keep up. Yeah. They can't cope. Yep. It all has to happen. Progression has to happen naturally, or else. Mm-hmm. So I will say that that is one thing they could like help out because it's interesting to me. I think that vote was pretty split as far as are we going to transport wolves or not. Mm-hmm. I think so too. And so. And I think on both sides of the equation, you had people that would hunt. So it wasn't a matter of activists versus non-activists. It was a matter of people. I don't know if they know that it's, stuff. It's just a matter of uh, – uh, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's very hard to say. Like, it's very hard to say which way is – would have worked better because they need it like they need wolves i think it was like within the next 15 years they need to have a good population of wolves for such and such reason such and such reason but they thought that it would be quicker if they transported it i don't know i'm not sure but uh what were you gonna say there's there's some uh what do you call that i don't know i thought you were trying to come up with a word uh discernment involved i don't know what you're gonna say uh it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so basically their conclusion that they draw is sport hunting can benefit conservation in a number of ways with with acquisition and protection of habitat being a major benefit. So you can't just build suburbs and expect white-tailed deer population to increase or right. whatever it is, you know. 
Um, there has to be like areas of land, white tailed deer especially, like lots of areas of land they can spread out and they, they travel quite a bit. Big cats as well um, travel quite a bit, a bit like a bigger area than you might think. Big cats, huh? Mm-hmm. Tell me something about big cats. Just for the audience out there that would be listening or might listen later or whatever, I have a few friends that tell me that uh, mountain lions don't exist in Texas. Absolutely false. And I told them there's no, there's no way. And we specifically said East Texas because I've seen one in East Texas. Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. And I'm They're like, in Willow no. Park. Okay. I've, I've talked to several different police officers that have said, I've seen, I've seen cougars doing my patrol on Ranch House Road. Several times. Okay. Where I grew up, yeah, there's cougars. That's for you, Blake Brody. Anyway, all right, cool. So that's there's definitely there's tons in West Texas. They're everywhere in the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, well, when well, the mountains, of course, like Big Bend area. Yeah, yeah. Tons I know, of well, we knew that, but I guess I shouldn't say. Specifically, we're talking about East Texas, and we're like, yeah, te- they're yeah. like, no, not even in Texas. And we're like, dude, come on, don't say Their that. The range is like we know Texas is obvious, right. but like so, he's like, there's no way because like. 300 miles is their radius for hunting and all this crap and I'm like dude then you might have seen one I, I don't know what you're saying like they say no all these all these sightings are false it's like a freaking you know alien uh, sighting or whatever which at the time we weren't getting into that but I was like mm-hmm. dude no dude this happens how do you not think they exist here yeah like I'm not sure you know I was like what the heck because they hunt a lot right like they hunt hogs all the freaking time and I've been with them a couple times and I get that but I'm like no no we've never seen one ever and I'm like dude he said, you don't think we were seen one by now? I'm like, nah, probably not. This is funny. Uh, estimating Texas mountain lion population is like herding cats. Literally. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Dad joke central. Matty B. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, most Texans know. Is he from Texas? Yeah, yeah, he's from Texas. Pathetic. Most Texans know that mountain lions lurk in backyards, ranches, and national parks across the state, especially in West and South Texas. But what evades biologists and trappers alike is where exactly to find these elusive predators and how many are out there. So I will say this. He is an avid listener. So yeah. thanks, dude, for I'm listening. I'm just giving still. you a hard time. No, he knows. <laughs> really, really, he'll be all right. Uh, it was just funny. I, when you said big cats, I was like, ooh, yeah, let's talk about big cats because there's no way. Wolves, grizzly bears, and jaguars, which were prevalent in Texas. Jaguars. Think about really? that. I think about weird. that. Mostly South Texas, like deep South Texas. Yeah, you're but talking they about, were don't they like a lot of trees and, and like wooded areas? South Texas, like way like Brownsville. Yeah, I'm um, thinking like, it's not pine trees, right? Yeah, like actually, but jaguars are really small. Like right. they're not as big as you might think. Well, I think they're like like a little bit bigger than a bobcat. Yeah, they're like in between bobcat and cougar. Right. Cougars are much much. Oh, for sure. It's like thirty percent. There's different. bobcats everywhere, and he agreed with that. He's like, yeah, there's bobcats everywhere. T- yeah. T- We've t- literally like they've shot bobcats. I get that, but mm-hmm. like. I'm talking about like uh, no, they haven't shot any of them. Never mind. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But like they, they, uh, he's like, no, there's no cougars or you know mountain lions. I'm like, whatever, dude. They, they're, they're here. They exist. <clears throat> anyway, guys, um, I don't know. Did I already tell people to share this? Share this, guys. <laughs> share this with anyone you know. This is how we get out there. This is how we share it. This is how we. This is just how we grow, man. And I think we have hit these sure. things pretty well. Did you have anything else we know to add? Um. Not this second, no. Sweet, man. All right. This has been another Toasty Podcast. I love you guys to death. Keep watching. Keep keep uh, spreading the word about what you believe because soon enough we won't be able to spread it anywhere but yeah, in person. Sure. And let us know about your hunting experiences. If you have any cool stories or anything, let us know. Yeah. In the comments. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I want to see hunting stuff. Do you I mean, there's always a crazy, there's always some sort of crazy story. What is hunting? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyway, guys, Uh, uh, stay toasty. Stay toasty, everybody. Toasty.